this morning? You're sure he didn't come back? Maybe I should wear a bell. Now, get out. Look, I ain't cleaned in here in a week, and I like things to be nice and neat. It won't take me a minute to get you fixed up. Gee, that cat's sure lucky having you to take care of it. Now, me, I never thought it'd live, busted leg like that. That's usually sure death for a cat. Any animal. I, I said get I out. I meant now. Right now. Well, all right, all right. You needn't get no huff. I just wanted you to be comfortable. I won't be back no more today. I am going shopping. You don't want to steal my money, Mrs. Dupre. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, that isn't honest. Put it back, Mrs. Dupre. Look, I didn't... Put it back! Well, all right, there. Now, let me go. You're hurt. Don't you come back in here unless I say so, you understand? Or next time, I won't be so forgiving, Mrs. Dupre. And maybe next time, I'll tell him two guys you are here. What guys? The ones outside waiting for you. Western Union, please. Yes, I'd like to send a telegram to Mrs. Sarah Walters, 8230 Race Street, Meadowtown, California. Here's the message. Lonesome for you, Mom. Get out the fatted calf. Coming home in three days to stay a while. Love to Helen and Doug. That's right. You can sign it, your ever-loving son, Johnny. Yes. How much is that?
Hi, Miss Walters. Is that for me? For your mother-in-law. What's the matter? You look worried. Telegrams still make me nervous. Well, nothing bad in this one. Oh, wait, I have some change inside. Oh, I'm going to night school come September, Miss Walters. Just don't flunk me. Some wonderful news, but I don't want you to get too excited. What is it? Johnny's coming home. Johnny? Your brother-in-law, Johnny? He'll be here in three days. I've heard he's very handsome. It doesn't seem possible after six years. He's coming home. Is he coming alone? I guess so, Lily. He doesn't say how long he's going to stay. Well, let's make him so comfortable he'll never want to leave. Oh, my goodness. I must get the windows washed. And my hair, I just have to get it done. Now, Mother, calm down. You're not supposed to get excited. But I can't let him see me looking like this. He was always so proud of me. You have plenty of time. Three days. You don't have to rush. There's so much to do. His room, the blanket should be cleaned up. I just don't know where to start. You can start by relaxing. And I'll take care of the rest. I'll help, too. I'll make appointments at the beauty parlor for both of us. If only Larry were alive. Mother. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I'm sorry. But Larry loved Johnny so. Mom. It was 34 to 8. What was 34 to 8? The baseball game. Oh. Oh? We barely won. <laughs> Doug, we have a surprise for you. Your Uncle Johnny's coming home. He is? Hmm? Well, it's about time. Now, what do you mean by that? I'm tired of being the only man in the house. It was giving me a complex. Complex? Yes. <laughs> wow, what a bill! <laughs> there should be a law against cooking in the summer. I'm baked. I wish you'd let me help. It's all done, darling. Where's Doug? Upstairs. He picked a bunch of flowers for Johnny's room. Wasn't that sweet? Yes, I just hope they're from our garden. Mother, he'll be here. I hope he's not sick again. Will you stop worrying? Come on now, sit down. Lily Kirby called again. Now she thinks she ought to give Johnny a party. Why? She doesn't even know him. He's a man, isn't he? What more does Lily have to know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should clean up for visitors more often. I found all the things I misplaced. Mother, come on now. Can't you wait for Johnny sitting down? <gasps> Force of habit, I guess. When he was a boy and got into mischief, I always used to wait out here to warn him that his, his father was angry. What are you doing? It's getting cooler out here. Maybe you ought to wait inside. I'm all right, really. But you're shaking. I think you're more nervous than I am. It's only the rush. bet with myself about 10 miles back. I knew you'd be waiting on the porch. Johnny. Oh, Mom. Oh, darling. I'm almost afraid to believe it. Why, Mom? It's been so long, years without any word, and now you're here. I, I find it so hard to believe. I should have written, I know, but when you've been traveling as much as I have, well, let me look at you. Well, you haven't changed. Oh. And how about you, Johnny? How have you been feeling? Oh, I'm fine, just fine. The headaches? You still get them? No, no, not at all. You sure? You look tired. Sure, I'm sure. I just told you, didn't I? Now, you've got to stop worrying about me. I'm home, and this is a celebration. Hey, where's my favorite sister-in-law? Helen! Helen! Oh, Johnny! Helen! Oh, it's so good to see you. Well, you look more beautiful than ever. Maybe I should have come home sooner. The fatted calf. It's turkey and it needs basting. Doug, say hello to your Uncle Johnny. Hi, Doug. Hi. Go ahead, Doug. Kiss your uncle. Oh, you're too big for that, huh? Shake. 
<laughs> you know, you look an awful lot like your dad did. He and I were pretty close. Much closer than most brothers. You know, he was almost killed once trying to save me. I was on a bike and I... Johnny. Well, anyway, he used to watch over me when I was your age. I'm seven and a half. You are, eh? Well, you won't remember it, but the last time I saw you, you weren't even two years old. Oh, I remember you very well. I spilled a glass of orange juice on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> what a big man. <laughs> Say, do you suppose that you've got enough muscle to bring in some luggage? Sure, what? Those packages out there in the back seat. Huh? Do you like baseball, Uncle Johnny? I sure do. Boy, will I tell him. Wow. Wait. Tell who what? Well, our team has a big game tomorrow. Only Shorty Stevens has the measles. So, I told the guys I'd ask you. To do what? To play outfield, of course. Whoops, <laughs> Pete. <laughs> He's quite a boy, isn't he? Yeah. But he still hasn't gotten over Larry yet. Not completely. It was so sudden. What about Helen? How's she now? Well, since she started teaching, she's better. But it's Doug we still worry about. A boy needs a father. While I'm here, Mom, I'll spend as much time with him as possible. Johnny, you can't imagine what your coming home means to all of us. I wish you'd never leave. Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> well, it sure feels like it anyway. Oh, my goodness. Whoops! Johnny, couldn't you stay? I hope so, Mom. I feel so safe here. I still don't think you should be doing this. Why not? Well, a kitchen's no place for a man. Lady, some of the places I've been in make a kitchen look like heaven. Besides, I've got to work off that dinner. Did you see all I ate? Did you really like it? Like it, I haven't. I haven't eaten so much since Paris. Oh, you've been to a lot of places, haven't you, Johnny? Mm -hmm. You name it, I've been there. Doing what? We never did know. Oh, a lot of things. A lot of things I don't think I'll ever have to do again. What do you mean? Well, let's just say I got what I set out to get. What was that? What I wasn't supposed to have, I guess. Oh, that goes back to Pop. Pop had a strict rule when we were growing up. Be content with what you have. We never had anything, and I wasn't very content. I didn't like being put out on a paper route when I was 12. I kept rebelling, which is why Mom and Larry always had to protect me. Bless them, they really did for years. Pop, he, he never learned how wrong he was. He stuck to the rules right to the bitter end. He died contented. We didn't even have enough to bury him with. Are you content now? Hmm? I hope so, Helen. First time in my life, I really hope so. Johnny, Helen, why not leave the rest for me? Oh, come inside. Doug's waiting for you. We'll be done in a minute. Now, out. Oh, but Johnny. Out. No buts. Go on. Go on. She can't slow down ever, can she? What does the doc really say about her heart? Oh, she'll be all right, as long as she doesn't worry or do too much. That dressmaking sign out there. She's working again, isn't she? Only once in a while for friends, to keep busy, that's all. Well, she'll never have to do anything anymore. Not even for friends. I'll see to that. Best thing, Johnny, would be for you to stay. I mean, you're not married, you're alone, and oh, we do worry about you. We? Well, you are all the family we have now, the three of us. I've never seen Mother and Doug look as happy as they did when they opened their gifts. It was like Christmas. Oh, much your gift. Well, now, Johnny, I wasn't hinting. I have everything I need. Well, I hope you like emeralds. Johnny. Here, take it. It's yours. Me? But it's genuine. Mm -hmm. So are you. You know, it bothers me when I see beautiful stones on undeserving fingers. Johnny, look, it even opened. Oh, Johnny, you had something engraved. How nice. Some initials. Initials? Yes, R.D. to J.D. <laughs> now you know one of the rules I broke. Playing cards with a stranger. Well, he couldn't.
couldn't pay his losses, he gave me this instead. I'll have your name put on it. Please. I want it just as it is, initials and all. Besides, if I give you the ring, I might never get it back. Why'd you say that? Well, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It, it's just that I'm superstitious about returning gifts, even for a little while. Perhaps I think it's bad luck. I don't know. Mother says it's plain silly. Well, she's right. Give it to me. Oh, no, please. Let me keep it. It doesn't matter where you got it. It's still the most beautiful present I ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. Thank you so much. Wait till Mother sees it. There you are, ladies. I told you that this trick was... Oh, no! <laughs> no wonder the tricks don't work. You keep laughing. Let them laugh, oh, disciple. If this one works for the next trick, we may turn them both into carrots. As you can see, ladies, this is but a simple kerchief. There's nothing here, and there's nothing here. And this container... <clears throat> this container... Oh. This container is but a bare receptacle, empty of all but air and enchantment. And now, my disciple, shall fascinate and enchant you with a feat of magic that is guaranteed to defy any and all explanation. Once again, dear ladies, I give you that great magician, Dauntless Douglas. Abracadabra. 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 Did you follow all my instructions? Sure. <laughs> it worked! Look! It worked! Well, naturally. And that old patient audience concludes tonight's performance. Very good. Good boy, Doug. It's amazing. It's the best I've ever told. Yes, Mom. It's time for you to pick up the toys and hit the hay. Now? Yes, now. Or I'll turn you into a carrot, old disciple. <laughs> <sighs> Johnny, you do work magic. What do you mean? Well, just look at him. Any other time, he'd be having conniptions. <laughs> he hasn't been this happy in a long time. None of us have. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Mom. Neither have I. Here, I'll do that. <laughs> Now, you are going to sit down. Hmm? You haven't stopped moving since you got here. Now, here's tonight's paper. Read it. That's an order. And take off that silly mustache. <laughs> Doug, you look like a real magician. Wait till a guy see the act. Wow. I can't get this one back in, Uncle Johnny. Well, you just leave it, Doug. I'll take care of it. Why'd you tear the paper? Oh, I, I was going to try something I saw on television here. But that's tonight's paper. Oh, let's see now. It's, it's supposed to come out just like a ladder. Let's see. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you goof. I sure did. <laughs> Johnny, don't think you're putting anything over on me. Now, you finish picking up, Doug. I guess I got carried away. Oh, well, no harm done. The only interesting news lately has been the recipes. Recipes? In a newspaper? <laughs> well, that reminds me of a new French cookbook I saw in New Orleans. Even the ones that you can't understand make your mouth for. Madam, it is yours if you will cook for me occasionally. I'll be happy to, and not just occasionally. All right, now you. Upstairs. If really had you called, you would have been asleep already. Oh, Mom. Who's Lily? Lily? Lily Kirby. 
She married Jim Kirby five years ago. You remember him. Oh, Kirby's real estate. I used to deliver papers, that big house of theirs on the hill. Mr. Kirby died last year. Did he? That old pirate, he sure had the real estate in this town tied up. Now, Johnny, he was a nice man. Yeah, he was a pirate. But you know, that's a nice business, real estate. If you like, I, I could talk to Lily about it. I'm sure she'd be willing to... Oh, wait a minute, Mom. Hold on. I was only thinking out loud. But if I did decide to stay, that would be a nice business. Helen, he's thinking of staying. I, I can tell. Oh, I hope so. It'll make Doug so happy. Come in. I finally got Doug settled. Thought you might like a snack. Thanks, Helen. Mother tells me you might stay. You might go into business here. Well, I've been thinking about it. Oh, that would be wonderful. I've got to tell Doug you'll be so... Now, wait a minute. Don't say anything. Not yet. It depends on too many things. Money? No. Money is the easy part now. You're worried about living here, aren't you? What do you mean by that? Well, after the way you've traveled and everything, it might be too quiet here for you. Oh, but that's what I want, Helen. That's what I want to be sure of. Quiet. No, there are other things to be considered. What other things? I don't know about some of them myself, not yet, but I should soon, one way or the other. You know which way we hope, Johnny. All of us. I know one thing you don't think I know. You do? There was something in the evening paper about you. About me? That's why you pretended to make a game out of it, so you could tear it out. Well, you are observant, aren't you? You look so much like Dougie when you were doing it. With that secret little boy look, I can tell a mile away. He can't hide anything from me, either. There. What's it say? It's none of your business. Johnny! Oh. oh, you hurt me. Oh, I'm sorry, Helen. Believe me, I, I don't know what came over me. What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. It's, it's just that it's about someone I knew, a, a friend. Ugly gossip. I didn't want anybody to read it. It made me angry. You understand. I guess so. You do forgive me, don't you? Of course, Johnny. Of course. Helen, but promise me you, you'll never get angry with me. Promise. Good night. Good night, Oh, Johnny, I was just going to knock. Mrs. Armstrong next door called and... What's Doug doing with the bike? Why, Helen got it for him this morning for Mr. Cooper across the street. I don't want him to have it. Johnny, it's a bargain and Doug's been dreaming of a bike. He's going to need it now. He's getting a paper route. Mom, don't you know what you're doing? But he'll only use it in the neighborhood. 
He won't be crossing any streets. I only crossed one that day. Mom, Doug doesn't have to earn any money. He doesn't have to go to work, and I don't want him on a bike, do you hear? Johnny, calm down. Do I have to show you the scar to remind you? You know what can happen to a kid on a bike. Johnny, there's no reason to get so excited. Now, you can talk to Helen or to Dougie about it. They'll understand. Right. I'm sorry, Mom. Are you getting a headache? No, no, I'm all right. I'm still a little tired from the trip, I guess. Well, why don't you go back to bed? I'll bring your breakfast up. You don't have to do that, Mom. I'm all right, honest. I'll be down soon. Don't say anything to Helen or Doug. I'll take care of it. All right. I forgot to kiss you. Good morning. Oh. It's stuck, that's all. Mom. The team's supposed to warm up in ten minutes. Oh, they can warm up without you. No, they can't. I've got the bath. There. Hi, how about some breakfast? It's all ready for you, but you'll have to hurry. Hey, what's going on around here? Something stupid. We're going to be interviewed. Dad, that's what I came up to tell you before. Rose Armstrong next door called. Interviewed? Why? One of the San Francisco papers picked us as a typical street in a typical town. Got everybody in an uproar. When did all this happen? This morning. They do it like that without warning. To be sure you're being typical, which is why we're all dressed up. Now, after you finish your breakfast, why don't you put on a tie and jacket? What for? Well, they'll be taking pictures of all of us. It's part of the interview. Well, I don't want any part of it, and I don't think you should either. You tell them, Uncle Johnny. You keep quiet. Why? What's the matter? Plenty. I've been working hard, and I came home to get a good rest. Now I find the house will be full of snoopers asking a lot of stupid questions. Johnny, if I dreamed... Well, did you have to say yes to them? Johnny, if you don't want to be interviewed, you don't have to. It's not important enough to get upset about. It's just that it's the first time anything like this ever happened to us, and we thought it would be nice if you were included. But if you'd rather you can go off and play baseball with Doug or anything, we don't mind. Would you play Uncle Johnny? Would you? No, no, no. Johnny, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Maybe I'd better go lie down for a while. I don't think I got enough sleep. I knew you weren't feeling right. That's why you've been getting so upset. You do need rest. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Mom. Helen, I didn't mean to blow up. That must be them. Better let them in, Mom. Go ahead. I'll uh, sneak up the back stairs. I might look a little too typical for them. But, Johnny, your breakfast. I don't feel good either. What do you mean? I don't know. I think I need exercise. <laughs> we'll have them take your picture first, and then you can go, all right? All right, but they won't like it. Why not? Because I'm going to look like this. Oh. That looks fine. OK, you ready? Swing! <laughs> Got it. Can I go now? You sure can. Sorry we held you up. That's okay. I'll be there in a minute on my bike. Doug, wait. Don't take your bike. Why not? Because you don't know how to ride it yet. What kind of reason is that? Well, now, Mrs. Wallace, uh, how many years have you lived here? Almost 40 years. Both my children were born in this house. Uh -huh. Well, uh, how long since your husband passed away? It'll be 10 years in April. Oh, and your son, who just got back, you, you say he's been gone about six years? Yes. But I'm afraid whatever information you want about him, you'll have to get from me. He's been working very hard, and he came home to rest. Oh, he's not well? He was in an accident when he was quite young. A bad accident. The doctor said he'd always have to take very good care of himself, otherwise he'd get relapses. The doctor said that if... Mother, Mr. Randall isn't doing a clinical survey. He wants to know what we're like, not how we feel. <sighs> <laughs> well, now, that brings me to you. To begin with, I feel fine. I'm glad. And, uh, and what are you like? Well, a little dull, I'm afraid. Oh, Helen, don't say that. She's far from dull. She not only teaches school, but she acts in our little theater group here, and she's a den mother. I have my scars to prove that. Uh, you're, you're Mrs. Walters, too, aren't you? Yes, my husband died a year ago. My oldest son, Larry. It was his heart. Oh, I'm so sorry. 
Well, I see you got the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear, but I hadn't finished cleaning it up. Oh, it was fine, and so was the cake that was out there, too. I hope you don't mind. Mind? I took it out, and then I forgot to bring it in. Oh, no, please don't bother, Mrs. Wallace. No, bother. You'd like some coffee? Oh, I would love it. I'll get the cup. Uh, Mrs. Wallace, uh, how many rooms do you have upstairs? Three bedrooms and a bath. Oh, well, that's fine. We'd like to get some shots of those two. Is it all right? Well, my brother-in-law's probably asleep. Oh, we'll be very quiet, I promise. You'll never know we're there. Just the one shot of each room. I'd rather you didn't. He really isn't feeling too well. Oh. Well, gee, it seems such a shame not to cover the house completely. <laughs> Between us, it shows more taste than any of the others. I'm sorry. Maybe some other time. Okay, some other time. I hope there's enough here for you. Oh, enough? <laughs> there's much too much. Oh, well, speak for yourself, John. I'll have another piece of that cake. What's the icing here? Well, it's a seven-minute icing on a uh, Lady Baltimore cake. Oh, that's a very clever girl. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and I hope we weren't a bother. Not at all. It was our pleasure. Bye. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Exciting. If only Johnny'd been feeling all right. Johnny, I thought you were asleep. I was. I slept like a baby. And we woke you making all this noise. Well, I didn't hear a thing. How did it go? Fine. It was exciting. Good. Now, where's Doug playing? In the park. I think I'll take a run over there. Why? You need the rest. Well, because I promised him. That's why. <sighs> That's Johnny. Even when he was a child, promises were sacred to him. If you broke one, it was awful. What do you mean? Well, before the accident, it wasn't so bad. But afterwards, he'd become like a different boy. He'd get so angry. You couldn't hate him for it. He was always so sweet later. <laughs> I didn't see it when I backed out. It was in the driveway. Poor Dougie. He loved it so. Oh, I'll make it up to him in another way, Mom. You know I will. Well, don't look so worried, Helen. I will. I promise. Mother, the bike wasn't in the driveway. It was on the walk. Oh? He did it deliberately. Why? I guess because he didn't want Doug to have it. He... He was afraid for him. Couldn't he tell Doug that instead of this? Sometimes it's hard to understand why Johnny does things, but... Oh, he doesn't mean any harm, dear. He really doesn't. Hi, Mrs. Wallace. Well, this is a surprise. I was just debating whether I should call you or not. Why? Oh, I guess I've been thinking about you since this morning. Before or after you took Johnny's picture, I'd like to talk to you. I think this is a time for complete honesty between us, Mr. Randolph. I'll start by saying, I don't believe you're here to do interviews at all. What do you want with our family? Mrs. Walters, uh... Tell me, please. Well, let me tell you one thing. When I first came here to this town, I, I just hadn't counted on dealing with decent people. You're a detective, no, aren't you? No, wait, believe me. After meeting you and your mother-in-law, I, I wish I'd never been assigned. Assigned to what? Well, I shouldn't tell you this, but it's for your own protection. There's a dangerous man loose, and we're after him. What man? Well, that's just it. We don't know. We don't really know what he looks like. 
Then what has that to do with us? We think it might be Johnny Walters. Why, this whole thing's ridiculous. Johnny a dangerous man. I don't know where you're from, Mr. Randall, but I think you ought to go back and stop playing games. Mrs. Walters, this is not a game. And no matter how you feel, I beg you, don't mention this to anyone, anyone at all. Why not? You couldn't look any more foolish than you do right now, you know. Maybe, Mrs. Wallace, but even if it means my being charged with false arrest, if I don't have your word, I'll arrest him right now. Arrest Johnny? Yes. And then hope that the picture we sent back for identification proves it. It won't prove anything. You're wrong. Johnny's good. He's kind. Look, I can well believe that when he can be. What do you mean? How well do you really know Johnny? He's my brother-in-law. Yes, but you didn't know him before he left here. You only met him on a visit six years ago. Now, what's he been doing for the last six years? Where did he get all the money he's got now? Is that what you suspect Johnny of being, a thief? No. A murderer. Mrs. Walters, look, if it's any small consolation, there's another man under strong suspicion, too. He's being hunted in the East. Then he's the one you want. Why don't you go and arrest him and leave us alone? Look, please believe one thing. If, if I'm right, if your brother-in-law is the man we want, I'll, I'll try and make it as easy as possible for you and his mother. We'll get him out of town quietly. We won't arrest him here. You did say it could be the man in the East, didn't you? Well, look, I, I hope I'm wrong about you, Johnny. I, I never wanted to be so wrong in my life. I put him in a cab and I shipped him right out of Monte Carlo. I think that's the funniest thing I've heard. <laughs> oh, I really must be going. I just came by to see if Helen was here. It's been an hour. Before I go, you have to tell me what finally happened to him. I don't know. I had to leave the Riviera for Algiers that same night. Algiers? Isn't that the place that the man said, come with me to the Casbah? Is it really romantic? Well, the Casbah is like no other place on Earth. It's something right out of the Arabian Nights. It's romantic, it's mysterious, and it's dangerous.
Where are you going, Johnny? Get some cigarettes upstairs. I'm out. Please, Miss Brighton, just this once. It's awfully important. If I make one exception, Helen, I'll have to make a hundred. You know that. I'm sorry, Miss Brighton, but there's something I've just got to see. It's in yesterday's paper. Oh, dear. Now I'll be late for the committee meeting. Get easy. I didn't mean to stay. I was waiting for you. Where'd you go? Shopping. I couldn't find anything. No, I mean the second time when Lily was there. Out. I had to go out. That's quite a gal, Lily. You know, she hooked me into giving a travel lecture for a club tomorrow. Mom wants to give a luncheon after. What do you think? What's the matter, Helen? Oh, it's still the bike, isn't it? Well, look, if you're worried about Doug, forget it. You know how I feel about him. I've already made it up to him. I'm buying him and his team a regular clubhouse. A thousand dollars worth of clubhouse. Helen, what is it? Why don't you go away? Why don't you go back to wherever you were? Helen! Why did you say that? Last night you asked me to stay. You wanted me to. Things are different now. Different? How are they different? What's happened? If you have any love for Mother, for Doug, you'll go away and never come back. Now, don't talk like that. It's not just them I love. You know that, don't you? I want to stay here and make a life for myself. For all of us. Don't. Huh? Leave me alone. Helen? Helen, listen, I'm going to get this straightened out if it's the last thing I do. All right, now, what's bothering you? You know, Johnny, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. How could you come here after... after... After what? I said after what? You think you know something about me? Well, whatever it is, I'll tell you this. You don't know anything. How could you? Why, you've been sheltered, protected all your life. 
You've never been forced to find out what a jungle this world really is or how rotten the people are who run it and make the rules. All of them. Every one of them. You rip the fronts off their houses. Right here, everywhere. What do you find? A lot of selfish, miserable animals. Stupid women, smelling of money they never earned. Dripping with diamonds they traded their souls for. Yes, and worked their husbands to death for. Why, they're not even animals. They're parasites. They're not even worth the air they breathe. Is that what you thought of Janice Dawson? Who? Janice Dawson. I don't even know what you're talking about. She had diamonds, didn't she, Johnny? Rings? Oh, is that what's got you so upset, that little thing? Don't you have any feeling? Oh, yes, Helen. Lots. Lots I haven't told you. Don't touch me. Helen. And I'm warning you, if you're still here tomorrow morning, I know somebody to go to about it. Helen, what do you mean? Somebody you'd like to see this ring. Now, let me in. Helen, I've got to talk to you. Are you going to let me in, or aren't you? Helen, there's things you don't understand. If you don't, Helen. If you don't. Me, you hear it? Do you want me to wake Mother up? All I want you to do is listen to me and know how much I have to stay here. Stay here? You want to stay here even now. You're the one who isn't human. Helen, you promised. Thanks, Mom. Say, I thought Lily's Club was a breakfast club. It is. <laughs> but they're all on diets. <laughs> Besides, they do more talking than eating. You'll be grateful that I'm feeding you now. Mom don't want any breakfast, Grandma. No breakfast? She ain't coming with us either. Why? Isn't she feeling well? Sure. She said she had to go somewhere else. I don't understand this. I'll go up and see. You tell her that Billy's stopping by to pick us all up and she'll be terribly disappointed. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Randolph. News? About Johnny? Are you sure? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll read you the wire. Dawson murder suspect killed last night, resisting arrest in New York. Case closed, return at once. Which means Johnny Wallace is innocent. How about that? Hello? Still there? Yes. Well, aren't you happy about it? Yes, yes, of course I'm happy. Yes, I thought you would be. Um, look, I, I don't leave till this afternoon. Uh, the train's at one. Did he confess, the man in New York? Oh, I don't see how, if he was killed resisting arrest. But they must feel satisfied if they close the case. Um, I was wondering if I could see you. Maybe for lunch? Lunch? I'll have to let you know. Convinced? Oh, I didn't mean to listen in. I, I just thought the call was for me. Did you hear everything he said? Now, how about some hot waffles and a new slant on life? What's the matter? 
I don't know. There's so many things I can't figure out. Oh, forget them. All you have to know is what's important. How I feel about Mom and Doug, and how I'd like to feel about you. Nothing else. I can't, Johnny. I just can't. Well, why not? You just heard I was innocent of whatever it is you thought I did. What more do you want? I want to know about this. I have to know the initials J.D. Were they Janice Dawson's? What if I told you they're not? I want Mr. Randall to tell me. It was where I was going when he phoned. Helen, can't you see what you're doing to me? Why? Because I'd never be able to look at you without thinking of that story in the paper and being afraid that and maybe... There's probably millions of women with the same initials. I told you how I got the ring. I don't know how the fella got it. Could have been his mother's. Then why don't we go find no. out? No. Why? Why not? Can't you trust me, Helen? Can't you trust me at all? Only if I'm not afraid of you, Johnny. Don't do it, Helen. I'm sorry. I have to be sure. For the last time, Helen, I'm warning you. Don't do it, Helen. You better take a pill. Yes, come on. Honestly, nothing's wrong. There. You want any more? No, thank you. Maybe you ought to take another pill, Ma. What for? I don't need it. Well, if they calm you, one more can't hurt. Oh, one more would put me to sleep. You don't know how powerful they are. Johnny, would you please put up a barricade so that no one can use the stairs till we get them fixed? Sure, Ma. Don't worry. Now then, will everybody please come in and finish breakfast? I'm fine. Come on, Doug. Helen. Lily will be here soon. She always has a tizzy when she has to wait. What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. Now, wait a minute, Helen. You wanted to kill me. No, I didn't. I even begged you not to go, didn't I? I couldn't hurt you. Who else did you fix those steps for? That was an accident. I know those steps, Johnny. Somebody tampered well, with Well, I them. didn't do it. Believe me, somebody else did. Who, Johnny? Who? Somebody who was frightened, running. Helen, I don't want to run. I want to stay here. You could have killed Mother, too. Now, don't say that. I love her. And so do I. That's why you're getting out of here. Who are you calling? Mike Randall. How can you do this to Mom? You know what today means to her. Do you want to kill her? It's nine o'clock now. You should be finished at the club by 11. You can be all packed here by 11.30. So think of a good excuse, Johnny. For what? For Mother, for why you have to leave so suddenly. Because I'm bringing Mike Randall here at 12. Maybe I shouldn't, but I'm giving you a half hour head start. Hello, Mr. Randall's room, please. Hello? Randall, this is Helen Walters. Could I come down and see you? Yes. Helen? Johnny? Everything's getting cold. I'm coming. Yes, I'll be there for sure. Much better if I know she's had something to eat. You know, I was so surprised when she said she had a headache. Helen doesn't get headaches. You think we ought to call the doctor? No. I think something's bothering her, something deep. What do you mean? She talked an awful lot about Larry last night, about the way he died so suddenly. Don't you mention it to her. Well, of 
course not. But she hasn't talked about it in months. I thought she was over it. Maybe it's still working inside of her. Poor dear. What are you doing? Oh, I think warm milk could be better for her, don't you? Of course. I should have thought of it. Now, the marmalade. Where did I put the marmalade? Don't get it too hot. Just take the chill off of it. I will, Mom. Now, let's see. I think I have about everything. Milk ready? Bob. Sure you don't want me to take it up, huh? No, I'd better do it. I'll see that she eats. You've got to have something. I will later. Don't worry about it. Go on, you'll be late. At least drink your milk. I will, Mother. Now, while it's warm, please. A little more. There. Now you go. I feel terrible going to Lily's meeting without you. I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You better hurry. Try to get some sleep. We'll be back at 11. Poor Helen. I know what a headache can be. I get the most awful migraine. Well, actually, it's not a headache. She's still brooding over Larry. Oh, I thought I'd never get over my gym. But I did it. I made myself. I hope you don't mind driving, Mr. Walters. Well, don't you think it's about time you started calling me Johnny? Of course, Johnny. I always feel so much safer when a man drives. Oh, how could I forget? What's the matter? Well, I've got some pictures and souvenirs, even some records I want to bring. Now, you go on ahead, and I'll take my car. Oh, we don't mind waiting. No, you better go on. I've got to go through a whole pile of stuff. I'll see you there. Goodbye, Mom. You take care of the ladies, Doug. for anything. Go away. Oh, I don't have to go anywhere now. I'm home for good. What did you do to me? Oh, I was very kind. It won't hurt. You just go to sleep. No. You never make trouble for anybody again. Oh, I've got to get out. I'll get out. Oh, you should have listened to me when I asked you, Helen. You should have. Because I wanted you alive then. Honest, I did. We could have been so happy. You and I and Doug. Doug. But you didn't want to go my way, did you? You had to be like everybody else, spying and snooping. Why? Helen? Helen? Right. 
Miss Genesis. She didn't want to give it up either. Still busy. Thanks. What's the matter with you? She said she'd be here in a little while. It's over an hour now. Where is she? It's on the phone. Where else? Relax. She doesn't stay on the phone that long. You meet her twice, and you know that. I know that. Well, it took me a little longer. I had to get married to find out that Phyllis can't even breathe unless it's into a phone. I'd like to marry her. Mrs. Walters? Helen. But you don't even know her. I know her. The way I never knew anyone else. Hello? Would you try that number again for me, please? Our train leaves at one, Mike. I know, Roy, all right. But that's not much time for something that important to a guy. I... Still busy. All right. No, wait. Would you check the line, please? Thanks. I can always come back, can't I? Yeah, I suppose. Well, that's all I want to find out, if she wants me to. It's crazy. Real crazy. What? Thanks. Where are you going? To her house. The phone's off the hook. And you're off your rocker. It's crazy. Waters? Very long. 
lucky, I must say. Another half hour. I don't know. Please, Doctor, don't say anything about this to Mother. Oh, I know better than that, Helen. But I do have to make a report. No, oh, Doctor, will you please hold off on that report? I'll come by and see about it later. I see. But then I've got... Not to... now, sir. I'll call you. Very well. Thank you. Why did you do this? I didn't. Do you realize if I hadn't gotten here, well, what is the matter with you? But I didn't. He did. Johnny. He's guilty. He's the real murderer. He tried to kill me because I knew. Where is he? With Mother. They'll be back soon. I'll make a call right now. Mike, you can't arrest him here. You called me Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm glad. I'll tell you why later. Right now, I've got to grab him while I can. You can't do it here in front of Mother. She'd never lived through it. Isn't there another way? But, Helen, I can't take chances with him. He's dangerous. He'll fight. No, he won't. Well, how do you know? He won't make a fuss in front of Mother. He loves her. No, I'm sorry. Please, try it my way. Please, Mike. I'm going to go out and play. Right this way, everybody. Wonderful speech. Thank you. Really a great talk, John. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. That was the best speech I've ever heard. I can hear that again. Thank Thank you so much. Every word was great. great. I listened to her. I didn't I can't tell you how you thrilled everybody. It was simply wonderful. Well, thank you. You ought to lecture for a living. Well, I'm more interested in real estate at the moment. Real estate? Where? What's wrong with right here? I'd better go up and see how Helen is. Did you hear what Johnny just said? No, what? Oh, he, oh, he, he ought to tell you himself. He ought to tell everyone. Quiet, everybody, please. Just a minute. Mr. Walters has an announcement to make. Here, here. Thank you. Well, I hadn't expected to make this as a public announcement, but it, it looks as if Lily has left me no choice. Well, to tell you the truth, I was just going to say. Helen. How do you feel? Fine, I feel fine. Well, Johnny, what were you going to say? Well, I... I was going to say that... I'm sorry, but... I'll be leaving here. Today. Oh, oh. Wait, Johnny. I guess I should have told you sooner, Mom, but... I didn't want to spoil your fun today. Must you go today? Worse than that, right now. It's a very big opportunity, Mother. Johnny told me about it last night. That's why you were so upset, wasn't it? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? I, I'm so sorry to go on like this, but it was so wonderful having all my family together again. Of course. Of course, we understand. It is a disappointment. You can be proud of your son, Mrs. Walters. I know we all are. Well, Johnny, if you're going to get started, I'll help you pack. Thanks. I'll be down soon. Well, I... I guess this is goodbye, everybody. Lily. Reverend. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye, Goodbye. 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 Well, I see you found it. Mm -hmm. Quite a collection, isn't it? Quite. Is there anything else you want us to pack? Well, you did overlook a few things. I used to keep my treasures in here when I was a kid. Oh, it's just treasure, Mr. Randall. See, there weren't just three women. There were more. <laughs> One sound out of you and I'll kill him. I'll get that stuff in there. Go on. Everything. Come on. Where? You promised me a half hour start, didn't you? 
this is one promise you're going to keep. Now, go on. One sound. Just one sound, you understand? Cops have harder heads than anybody. He wanted to arrest you when you first came in, but he didn't, for mother's sake. Oh, don't give me that. He did it for you to be a big man. <laughs> big man. He's lucky I let him live. Johnny, you don't need me. Please, stop the car. Let me out. Sure. You can run to the nearest telephone. What are you going to do with me? What do you think? If you do that again, do you hear? Watch out! No! no. lost a son, a son she can be proud of, brave, gentle, generous. I'm glad you're here, Mike. I couldn't have faced it without you. Johnny thought the world was a horrible place. He couldn't have been happy ever. Oh, I guess he couldn't. He didn't trust people. He hated them. He said people like me had no idea what the world was really like, that it was a jungle. We make our own jungles, Helen. He was just a very sick man. Let's be thankful he's addressed now. Mm -hmm. 